Okay, today I'd like to jump into a topic I've been thinking quite a lot about, and that is the use of these new AI technologies for retaining and transferring institutional knowledge. We're going to get into what that means and how to do it on a basic level. We're also going to talk a little bit about the brain in the jar technique, which is something I'm experimenting with as a way to uh, pull data out of the brains, out of the minds of different subject matter experts and use that for various things, including succession planning, mergers and acquisitions, all sorts of training and more. So let's get into it here. Um, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, traditional uh, IP. When we think of IP, we think about big data, we think about patents. We don't often think about some of the most important IP, which is the non-structured data, the knowledge that's living inside of our staff and our leadership teams, because that's been very challenging to capture in the past. And that's what these large language models like ChatGPT, OpenAI, um, there's tons of them coming out now. But that's really, I think, one of the major use cases is that we can now and capture and utilize this unstructured data in a way that was previously very, very difficult, if not impossible. And so I want to talk a little bit today about how to do that on a high level. First of all, I want to get into the use cases uh, for this. So I hinted at it a little bit earlier. The one that comes to my mind is succession planning. So if someone's looking to retire or move to a different uh, company, you know, capturing their knowledge base is uh, very, very critical to the success of the future of that company, especially if it's a founder uh, or a, you know, key team member. This can play a major role when it comes to mergers and acquisitions as well. You might want to think about if you're selling a business or buying a business, implementing a structure here to capture that institutional knowledge. If you're buying a business, I think it'd be helpful to require, you know, that the different leaderships, different subject matter experts, um, folks on the leadership team, I should say, uh, go through a process like this or institute a process of capturing their, uh, their knowledge base. If you're selling your business, you might want to be proactive and be able to say, hey, look, we've, we've already done this. We've, we've captured this knowledge. And if you just, you know, want to run a good organization, having this stuff at hand can be very helpful. It's a way of thinking about documenting all of your processes, but on a much, much more uh, robust level. Uh, this can scale the time of your leadership team. They don't have to answer questions. They may be able to just let folks consult the uh, AI that they've built. And getting down to a departmental level, training and so forth, um, you know, creating interactive training materials, uh, building uh, bots that new employees can chat with when they're trying to learn the ropes and learn how to, how to do their job can really scale the time that those different managers have. They don't have to spend so much time answering questions if they build this uh, knowledge base and build it in a way that can be easily accessed and use, useful to these uh, new employees. I think that's a major use case. Customer support obviously has been a, a use case for chatbots for a very long time, uh, but I think that now with these new large language models and these, you know, capturing uh, this institutional knowledge on all these different levels can really increase the usefulness of these different customer support chatbots. And marketing and content creation, if you want to think about flipping it nowadays, people are using ChatGPT to just whip up a bunch of social media. Um, you know, blurbs that then typically need a pretty good amount of editing to be customized to whatever your use case is, whatever your industry is. And I think that if you do this in the kind of the reverse way where you create a unique customized knowledge base and then ask the AI to create these different social media posts or maybe it's blog articles, it could be almost anything. Uh, you're, you're sort of getting the best of, uh, of all the worlds there by, um, you know, creating these social media handles from a unique customized knowledge base uh, rather than trying to infuse that later on. Um, and then really kind of whatever is coming next. So these are just a few ideas, but we know with AI and how fast it's accelerating every technology you can imagine, 
um, there's going to be other use cases down the road. So I guess I want to make the argument that getting a process up and running to capturing your uh, your organization's institutional knowledge, maybe at the leadership level and departmental levels, even down to just someone who's really good at their job, um, can be a really worthwhile endeavor, can be uh, useful in many ways down the road, in some ways we can't even imagine yet. So I got a quote here from Bill Gates. Uh, he wrote an article called The Age of AI Has Begun. And he talks about these company-wide agents that will empower employees in new ways. An agent that understands a particular company will be available for its employees to consult directly and should be a part of every meeting so it can answer questions. It can be told to be passive or encouraged to speak up if it has some insight. It will need access to sales, support, finance, product schedules, and text related to the company. It should read news related to the industry the company is in, and I believe that the result will be that employees will become more productive. So what Bill Gates doesn't talk about is, you know, sort of getting these things up and running and really training these AIs on your unique institutional knowledge. And I think that's what I want to get into today. It's a a four-step process here. Uh, there's the input, getting, uh, collecting all of this knowledge, and, and we're going to get into how to do that, uh, how to edit this knowledge base, uh, how to train these large language models like GPT uh, on your unique knowledge base, and then how to deploy it. How are people going to use it? How are people going to access it? And think about some you know, quick and dirty ways to do all of this, as well as maybe some more robust, you know, long-term uh, ways of doing all of these processes. So as far as the input goes, you can start with anything, really. You can start with text. You can start with audio. You can start with video. But in the end, it all needs to be converted to text. And we'll get into that in the second editing phase here in a second here. Uh, but think about, you know, a quick and dirty way is just to start with what you have. What collateral have you already built? Have you already spent time on? Uh, different training materials or courses or documentation in that area. P- perhaps somebody on your team has been doing a podcast for a long time or has been writing a bunch of blog posts. Those can be great places to start as you start experimenting with this and learning You know how much uh, of this information do you need to create something useful? How are you thinking about deploying it? How are you thinking about using it? What do you need you know, to create with this stuff? Um, And if you don't have any of that stuff, or maybe in addition to that, you might want to think about this, uh, doing a series of interviews. And this is what I'm calling the brain in the jar technique. And what I'm experimenting with now are these ongoing, either weekly or monthly interviews that are 30 to 60 minutes. Um, And really just picking a different subject matter expert, zeroing in maybe in particular on one aspect uh, of their job that they're really good at and trying to mine that for all it's worth. So I think it is uh, probably best if you consider this an ongoing process and not something that's just a one and done. You can't just do, uh, you know, 30 minutes and expect that, you know, this is going to work very well. Uh, But I think, you know, building that process, building that habit of continuously uh, put adding to this knowledge base could really pay some some great dividends in the long run. The interviewer should show up, you know, prepared. This shouldn't just be a casual chat, just talk about whatever. Um, but doing some, you know, I, you know, building a framework around how they're going to try to uh, index this, you know, whatever the subject matter experts knowledge base is. I think it's probably a good idea to just interview one person and not have a whole group of people kind of talking and sharing there ideas as that might get confusing down the road um, as you're editing this and utilizing it because there's going to be you know conflicting views there not that the ai can't handle that in the long run but i think when you want this clean data going in it probably makes sense to just interview one person at this step um starting with you know how are certain decisions made you know thinking about you know why did if it's a founder why did they start the organization what were the different pivot points that they went through and why um what are the frequently asked questions that they get you know who's why what do they always have to answer what are their you know basic frameworks for thinking about whatever their area of expertise is 
And you can get creative with it. Think about different SEO search queries that are out there related to that expertise and maybe use those as interview questions. Uh, you can also think about re repurposing these interviews into a podcast. There's no reason that these, can't, uh, these interviews can't be valuable in other ways uh, in addition to training these large language models. So that might be one um, other use case and another way to convince your team that this is something worthwhile. Now we're getting into the editing of the information. Like I said, everything you collect needs to be converted into text. OpenAI has some APIs now called Whisper, using the Whisper technology. There are a lot of other transcription services out there. I'm gonna be building out some resources, some tools, some different collab notebooks that can help uh, process your different uh, media formats, video or audio into text. But then you need to kind of edit these transcripts. And there's ways that AI can help with this, but I think having some human oversight is pretty critical as well. You want to avoid the whole garbage in, garbage out situation. The more uh, organized these uh, interviews are, when you put them into the AI, the more useful they're going to be down the road. A few things to maybe look out for is anything that can be misinterpreted. Uh, by the AI, so potentially stories and metaphors, just being careful with those. They can be useful in some instances. In some instances, instances they might cause uh, errors down the road. Also, obviously, any non-relevant conversation that gets picked up in these different uh, interviews that you're doing, you want to make sure and edit uh, those out. So once you have some clean transcripts, um, you know, you need to begin to think about how to train these models. And the good news is this is a lot easier than you think. This is really the uh, innovation that these large language models are bringing to the forefront now. Um, you're basically relying on OpenAI or whatever large language model to do the heavy lifting. Uh, and this is really what was very, very difficult previously to the to these was be that companies would have to and were attempting to train their own models. Uh, but I think largely it makes a lot more sense to uh, use the uh, the technology that OpenAI and others have created as the source uh, model for your knowledge base and then train those on your your new uh, unique custom knowledge. You want to convert those transcripts into embeddings. Those are basically numerical representations of the text. Um, there's a lot of open AI documentation on how to do this, how to convert these uh, transcripts into embeddings, and that would be a first place to look. I'm, I'm going to be building out and looking into experimenting with all the different possible ways to do this now and in the future because this stuff is really changing fast. Uh, it's a very new field and I think it, it just makes uh, sense to build this process for collecting this information in whatever format that might be and building a habit, building a process for editing that into clean usable information because once you have that, you can use that with whatever the new uh, GPT that comes out might be, whatever the new large language model, whatever the new use case is, having uh, that, that database and continuously building that database is, is the hard part. Uh, plugging it into these emerging technologies is a lot easier than you think. Uh, so now thinking about deploying it, how are you gonna test it? How are you gonna potentially use this? Uh, custom knowledge base. Uh, I like these Google Collab notebooks. I'm not a coder, but I feel like they are a very great way to bridge the gap between just somebody who might be a little, have some technical savvy uh, and, you know, copy and pasting code into very usable and unique uh, formats. So I'm going to be rolling out a lot of different Collab notebooks that do this exact thing. And I'll be sharing those on my Patreon. Uh, so with a little bit of training, some simple templates in the Google Collabs can take you a long way for using these uh, models. So loading in your custom knowledge base and then testing there, I think, is a great way to start. There's also some out-of-the-box tools that I have listed here that you might want to just experiment with, loading your PDFs into those and seeing what you can get out of them or loading your text documents into those, seeing what you can uh, make and create. 
Once you get something up and running, you can maybe think about getting fancy. There's a couple tools here, Eleven Labs and Synthesia that are very interesting um, if you want to you know, think about speaking directly to the AI. Uh, Eleven Labs it provides that text to voice. Uh, Synthesia is another a tool that allows you to speak almost to like a talking head type uh, avatar. And there's a lot of stuff, again, rolling out all the time, so who knows what this is going to turn into. Uh, using just the basic Google Collab notebooks or potentially some of these out-of-the-box solutions, you can think about just creating some social media copy from your uh, custom database of, uh, of knowledge. Uh, you can think about other marketing materials or training materials that you can generate. Just start simply and begin experimenting. I think you're going to be ahead of the curve. Um, so I have a cheat sheet version of this available for just a couple bucks in my Patreon. This is a checklist that goes through everything and it includes some extra prompts here. This is what it looks like. Just, you know, some things you might want to talk about with your team, some prompts that you can plug right into, uh, you know, open AI's chat GPT that'll help you explore, you know, what are the typical, um, you know, uses for IP in your industry and what are some ways to think about using these large language models. So just plugging this right into ChatGPT can help you explore this topic. Um, and again, just going through everything that we spoke about with extra prompts and links to all the resources here. That's in my Patreon. I'm also building out a library of these Google Collabs. This is one that I'm working on, just a very quick and dirty way to customize uh, the uh, chat GPT to make it talk like a surfer. This is just a quick example of how to get under the hood uh, with uh, these Google Collabs and, and start to learn how to use them so that you can use them for some of the stuff we spoke about today, the embeddings, uh, potentially using the Whisper API to do the transcription, because all of this very is getting a lot easier. The, the, the walls between coders and us mere mortals is uh, kind of melting down. So in addition to the PDFs and the collabs, you know, I love talking about this stuff. So I have a couple spots in there for some one on one coaching and consulting. So if that's something you're interested in, I'd love to chat with you about whatever problem you're looking to solve and, um, you know, generally what, what your ideas about all this are. So thanks for watching. Thanks for getting this far through the video with me. I think this is an important concept. This is going to be a massive industry. Um, just this knowledge capture industry, I think could be, could be huge. So Again, if you've enjoyed this, it really helps me out. If you want to like and subscribe, hit me up in the comments and I'll look out for you in the next video. Thanks.